IGA supermarkets across our region say it's time. It's time. Time to shop locally at IGA. Shop where you help support local manufacturers like Paul's, Hazeldean's, Tip Top. Love the deli. Shop knowing that when you sit down to dinner, lunch, a snack, you're keeping your dollar local. Shop where your local supermarket supports your community. It's our price match. Fresh produce. Market days. Huge meat sales. It's time. It's time to shop locally at IGA. Across Central Victoria, this is Win News. Tonight, Victorians rush to the regions for the long weekend. Farmers bear the brunt of surging fuel, fertiliser and energy costs. And the local heroes recognised for their contribution to their communities. Good evening, I'm Bruce Roberts. Also tonight, the new initiative helping divert hundreds of tonnes of electrical goods from landfill. Victorians have rushed to the regions this long weekend, making the most of their winter break. Our ski fields have seen strong numbers amid record snowfall, while many families made the trek to their favourite tourism attractions. It's been a plentiful start to winter for Victoria's ski resorts. An unusually large amount of snow falling this early in the season, encouraging many to make the trek to the mountains. From visitors coming into the resort to having almost a metre of snow falling before the Queen's birthday weekend has just made it a record breaker all around. More than 6,500 people at Falls Creek alone, some returning for the first time since 2019. The state's last two snow seasons ravaged by lockdowns. Obviously, recovery is going to take more than just one season, but this is a fantastic start to our 2022 season. Last year's Queen's birthday long weekend, Melburnians were shut out of the regions, hitting businesses hard on what's typically a busy period. Tourist draw cards like Sovereign Hill are seeing strong numbers of visitors from the city, making up for lost time. We've got winter wonderlights coming up. People love that, we know that. So it's really great to see people here on the long weekend in between and really taking advantage of everything that Sovereign Hill has to offer. Ballarat's junior basketball tournament also bringing in thousands from across the state. Council estimating it generates nearly $5 million to the local economy. We know that events are a major driver of visitation. We know that that fills restaurants, fills businesses businesses right across Ballarat and um, it's really important to keep those businesses sustainable and thriving throughout the year. Sam Mills, Win News. Farmers are bearing the brunt of surging on land costs including fuel, fertiliser and energy. Growers say a perfect storm across the horticultural sector has caused produce prices to jump but farmers say no one is winning. George Bobbin's horticultural business was reduced by two thirds during the pandemic. It had a massive impact on his bottom line and now rising input costs are creating another challenge. We can't pass them on and we've got to basically absorb them. Regional Victorian producers are grappling with the rising cost of fuel, wages, seeds and fertiliser, as well as packaging and freight. Taken over the 4,000 square metres of shedding we've got here, we spend about seventy to $80,000 uh, per year on, uh, on heat. Victoria's horticultural industry has over 3,700 businesses and is worth $2.4 billion. The Victorian Farmers Federation says a perfect storm of factors is wreaking havoc on the sector and driving up the price of produce. It says addressing these factors will help drive prices down. So our electricity, our fuel, our gas, our fertiliser prices have all gone up. You know, this, we've got the same issues that people at home have got and that is what's driving the price. So Many farmers are looking forward to summer when the warmer weather reduces their energy costs as opposed to the cooler months that reduces their yields, creating extra challenges. And then we kind of ride this 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 time out. Grace Aiken, Win News. A central Victorian Catholic priest and local country music icon have been named on this year's Queen's Birthday Honours list. The local heroes have been recognised for their contribution, commitment and dedication to their communities. He's an entertainer, deputy mayor, passionate volunteer and now Aubrey Steve Bowens, an OAM recipient. His work helping found Country Hope, working with special needs communities, firefighting and youth mentoring, seeing him awarded with the honour. You get a lot more benefit out of it than you actually think you're giving. It's, a, it's an amazing thing to do and it's a bit like the boomerang theory of what you throw out is what comes back. Shepparton's Jeanette Powell's 24 years of tireless work representing the region at local and state government also 
also saw her recognised for her dedication. And I've been really lucky that I've been given so many opportunities um, throughout my time. Uh, I've met with so many wonderful and different people. Ballarat's Anna Crone's been honoured for her work in education with women and the Catholic Church. So many of the women that I'm dealing with on a daily basis are women in the Ballarat or the regional areas, so... I feel like I share it with them. A Bendigo Catholic priest who served in towns across the state also recognised. And an ability to talk and to chat and to discuss things and to find a solution that respects each and every individual. And that gives me great satisfaction. Gippsland wouldn't be what it is today without Traralgon's Richard Elkington's passion for regional growth. He's played a part in water, energy, football and the Victorian Chamber of Commerce. I was part of the process of delivering a dual highway between Traralgon and Sale. I was part of the process of... Uh, ensuring funding for the regional hospital. Raising funds for community groups with sweet tunes and a dedication to community radio saw bag shots Florence Forbes also make the list. I went into music and started going around nursing homes and um, seniors clubs and, oh, and then I started running concerts. Uh, and raised a lot, a lot of money. Beechworth's Iris Manick hopes her work volunteering with Tidy Towns, the Visitor Information Centre and Lions will encourage others. And that's why I volunteer myself, that hopefully others will join me, no matter what age. From bushfire recovery and student mentoring to countless positions in agribusiness, rural groups and boards, Yarrawonga's Catherine Marriott's dedicated to improving life on the land. What do you say when you get honoured with something like this. I think all I can say is that it's really a reflection of the people of rural and regional Australia because you're a product of those that you surround yourself with. Dalesford's Christine Douglas's incredible voice has led her to shape Australian opera. She set up a charity to help people get their big break. We help those young people to know how to be on stage and how to work with colleagues and how to get inside a role and how to learn, really, and then how to communicate. Sarsfield's Joanne Andrews was pivotal in the bushfire recovery effort. We're nearly two years on from that event, so receiving this now is just a really good reminder of... Um, how far our communities come. Other regional recipients include Castle Maine's Marilyn Bennett and Sales' Gary Howard. Morgan Dyer, Wing News. Fire Rescue Victoria has responded to more than 6,000 prank calls in the first four months of the year, costing the state millions. Between January and April, FRV crews responded to more than 9,500 false alarms. Of those, more than 6,800 were deliberate prank calls, fire alarm system generated or human error. FRV says it's working to reduce this through education and partnerships with building owners and occupiers, local councils and government authorities. A generator fault in a Victorian power station is adding to concerns of skyrocketing energy prices, with AGL confirming a unit will be down until September. It comes as almost a quarter of Australia's coal power capacity is offline. An electrical fault last April's kept the Unit 2 generator at Loyang A offline. While AGL works to repair it, it says global supply chain issues are at fault for the extended outage. It's sparking further concerns about surging energy prices. Every time one of these things breaks down, we instantaneously lose hundreds, uh, sometimes thousand, over a thousand megawatts of power and that's just a recipe for chaos and uh, blackouts. Unit 2 was taken offline for seven months in 2019 when crews worked to repair damage from an electrical short. They've done a great job for many decades and so have the workers who work there, but they're really old now and burning uh, huge amounts of coal wears them out. The Australia Institute's calling for a faster transition to renewables. With the Victorian default offer set to increase, advocacy groups say the federal government should do more to help low-income households. With an increase in the payment for job seeker and other working age payments, which is really only $46 a day and well below the poverty line. People are urged to contact their energy provider for a payment plan to avoid large debts. The other thing is if they can reduce the energy costs by um, making their houses or apartments um, much more energy efficient. Jack Morgan, Win News.
Australian milk production continues to decline according to Rubobank's latest dairy report. National milk production is down 3.4 per cent as of April. It comes as farmers face rising costs on a number of fronts, with the price of feed and supplements becoming more expensive, adding to inflationary pressures. But it's hoped those on the land will benefit from record farm gate milk prices next season, with processors signalling high prices to kick off on July 1. And coming up next on Win News, the campaign helping wine lovers stay under the limit and the new initiative helping divert hundreds of tonnes of electrical goods from landfill. Bendigo's St Vinnie's store is taking part in a new test and tag initiative giving electrical goods a second chance at life. Green Sparks has been rolled out across the state and is estimated to help divert 100 tonnes from landfill every year. Old electrical goods that otherwise would have gone to landfill are now getting a second chance at life. More than 200 trained volunteers at St Vinnie's have been testing and tagging products as part of the organisation's new Green Sparks initiative. What we've actually been able to do is stop product going to landfill. So 100,000 items would have gone into landfill had we not had this initiative. The recycling program's been rolled out to most stores across the state. So we now have this operating in just over 100 of our shops of the 109. St Finney's stores also have dedicated battery disposal hubs helping combat e-waste. It's made possible thanks to a $250,000 state government grant. It is a really valuable service, especially when we consider that in the last 10 years, the rate of e-waste generated each year by all of us in this country has more than doubled. And with proceeds from sales going directly back to the community, helping those in need, we're being encouraged to search our cupboards for any unused electrical goods. They must either be new or fully functioning. I'm pretty sure at the back of it, there's probably a uh, George Foreman grill that we all got at some stage. Have a look at it. And we have a bit of a saying. If it's good enough for your family, it's good enough to bring to one of our Vinnie shops. Grace Aiken, Win News. A new campaign is aiming to keep wine tasting taste full by empowering drinkers to keep track of how much they've consumed. The Drinkwise initiative being warmly embraced as cellar doors welcome growing crowds. For many Australians, exploring the country's wine regions is as good as life gets. And a new campaign is aiming to make sure those adventures end safely. Stay tasteful while tasting encourages wine lovers to remain in control. Sometimes they can lose track of how much they are consuming, which is why these scratchy cards are so important. It allows them a very, in a very simple way to track how much they're drinking. The scratchy cards are must if you're the designated driver. Once they've had six tastings, that'll equate to a standard drink. And then they can start to track their drinks, even between cellar doors, which is so important. I think it gives consumers that are coming to the cellar doors that safety to know that uh, they have real information that can guide them in making great choices. Governments and the wine sector are backing the initiative. We'll be rolling out Stay Tasteful While Tasting across all 11 of our cellar doors in Australia using all of the tools because they're really great for helping our cellar door managers and staff educate consumers in a really simple and engaging way. I think for businesses it's a great benefit because they're seen as being really responsible and they're seen as really key for their consumers. Uh, and so this initiative is a really important way of getting a drink-wise message to people that are enjoying a cellar door, enjoying their first experience of our great industry and tasting great Australian wine. Cheers to that in moderation. Alex Johnston, Win News. King Charles III, is that too much for Aussies to swallow? The new government's charged an assistant minister for a republic to explore how Australia might split from the monarchy. We hit the streets this Queen's birthday holiday to test the temperature. On the day to celebrate the Queen and Australia's ties to the monarchy, questions about what comes next for the country. Despite recent Platinum Jubilee celebrations, it seems some would opt for a republic. I don't think the Queen has much influence anymore over Australia. I, mean, I think those days are much long gone, to be honest. We have rights, freedoms, and we should be, you know, we're really lucky to live where we are. So um, I think that there are probably more important issues that we need to tackle as a society before we start thinking about changing the model of governance. I've never been a big fan, but I think people have held on to some ideas, but I think that 
that change is inevitable. Um, 96, she's not doing well. Um, it's kind of a redundant role as far as I'm concerned. It's about time we separate, go by ourselves and do what we want to do. The tide of history is in favour of us cutting the ties with the monarchy and uh, standing up for ourselves. Things around Indigenous recognition are more important and, and, and there's other things we can do. But you know, down the track, I think it's, it's an Australian head of state, something we should aim for. Just to show we're a mature country, and particularly if we um, do the um, reconciliation with um, the Indigenous people and um, do the voice and all of that. But, um, you know, I, I still love the Queen, <laughs> really. Brooke Roth, Win News. A campaign's launched to boost Aussie blood donor supply with a renewed push to overturn a ban on gay men and others rolling up their sleeves. Current regulations require some groups to abstain for three months despite lower incidence of HIV than when they were introduced. The Let Us Give campaign wants a rethink on what it says are out-of-date rules. We want to move to an individual risk-based assessment. A lot of us feel like, you know, we, we want to help. We want to, we want to give blood. Um, we, know that the, we know that the blood supplies are at their lowest um, and yet we can't and for reasons that we feel are not not fair and no longer in line with what the rest of the world is doing. Lifeblood estimates a donation is needed every 18 seconds with the changes tipped to make 25,000 more litres of blood available every year. The petition to new Health Minister Mark Butler coincides with National Blood Donor Week this week. It is time for sport now with Jared Constable and we've had a round of very convincing results in Bendigo Football Netball League. Some huge results, Bruce, and I'll have all the details after the break. Plus, the country footy products who start in round 13 of the AFL. Sandhurst's footy side celebrating a thumping 111 point win over Castle Main in round nine of the Bendigo Football Netball League. Gisborne silenced Eagle Hawk with a 63 point win and Kyneton booted 18 goals to Maryborough's five to consolidate its fourth spot on the ladder. In the netball, Kangaroo Flat had a convincing 33 goal win over South Bendigo and Strathfield Say had a stunning 28 goal victory over Golden Square. Warrnambool's humour cluggage's season continues to go from strength to strength with the Lions star shining in his side's victory over St Kilda. Meanwhile, Moama's Lockie Schultz also impressed, kicking two goals in Fremantle's win over Hawthorne. A special anniversary for Essendon as it celebrated the club's 150th anniversary against old rivals Carlton. Lee and Gather's Dyson Heppel gathered past and present troops for a rev up pre-game, but it was another Gippslander who gave the Blues the fast start. JB when it gets to this end of the ground, Mackay goes around the corner and he's got it. Harry Mackay slotting three goals in his comeback from injury as Carlton returned to the winners list. Sam Doherty and Sam Walsh among the best for the Blues. Heppel and Ballarat's Ben Hobbs each managed a goal as Essendon's season went from bad to worse. Fremantle moved to third on the AFL ladder with a 13-point win over Hawthorne at home. Moama's Lockie Schultz was the equal leading goal kicker for the Dockers, the crafty small forward finishing with two. Walters! He launched, but he made the contest and Schultz was able to dribble the kick underneath his opponent and fly it away to go. Aubrey's Jacob Kaczynski managed one major for the visitors. Up at the Gabba, Warnable's Hugh McCluggage was simply supreme. Low ball to McCluggage, breaks the arc, fires at goal, umpire hardly had to move. 33 disposals and a goal helping the Lions to victory over St Kilda. Fellow former Rebels Brad Crouch and Dan Butler managed a goal each for the Saints. Sam Mills, Win News. The Wallaroos have fallen just short of an historic victory over the US in their Pacific Four Series matchup yesterday. After a triumphant 14-point comeback, the Wallaroos were defeated by just two points, 16-14 the final score. A crucial try by Ashley Masters saw the gap close as they tried to chase a win against the US for the first time in 20 years. It really sort of changed momentum for us. We really struggled in that first half to get any flow and any momentum. And I sort of thought that started to create a little bit there and went back to back. But just the, I guess the time cost us at the end of the game. Brumby's winger Jemima McCalman making her Wallaroos starting debut alongside teammate Michaela Leonard. The Aussie women's side is still hunting a win in the Pacific Four Series and will come up against Canada this weekend.
And that's our night in sport, Bruce. Jared, thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for filling in for me for the past three weeks while I've been away. It's great to have you back, mate. Thank you very much. Adam Strainy joins us next with the week ahead. He'll outline the details after the break. Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your day off. If you had one, another cold start across the region with the next trough arriving from Wednesday, keeping a tight grip of those chilly conditions. What a great way to start the week from Grace with this snap of the Murray through Mildura. Just a beautiful photo. Thanks so much, Grace. You're an absolute legend. Love to see more of the region. So showcase where you live by sending that weather pic to weather at wintv.com.au. Cloudy skies with a bit of morning fog, mainly in the south, muggy. Castlemaine, humidity levels are easing by the afternoon. Light showers around Maryborough as well too. Uh, Bendigo saw temperatures dip back to 3 degrees on the Mercury overnight. Calmer winds around Hopeton with uh, peak gusts at around 20 k's per hour. Swan Hill reached its forecast top at around 11.40 this morning with temps cooling back in the afternoon. Now, as we have a look at our charts, a high-pressure system extends a ridge over western Victoria with an associated ridge to drift eastwards uh, to be over the Tasman tomorrow night. Now, then, an area of low pressure is expected to move across Bass Strait midweek before another high follows moving over Victoria on the weekend. So, to the forecast for central Victoria, cloudy with a slight chance of showers developing during the morning, then increasing to a medium chance in the evening. 11 in Castlemaine, uh, also 12 for Bendigo, 13 for Charlton and also at Chuka, 14 across Swan Hill, Kerrang, 15 out west at Hopeton and around 15 degrees for Mildura. Bendigo tomorrow, maybe a shower or two developing, a top of around 12 degrees, while in the big smoke, cloudy skies and around about 14 for Melbourne and over the next few days. Well, Wednesday's going to be uh, cloudy, very high chance of showers, moderate winds as well. Thursday is looking cloudy with those showers persisting and then into Friday, well, a bit of a foggy start, then patchy uh, cloud and a few light showers about as well. Bruce, more cold and wet conditions are ahead. Adam, thank you very much for that and thank you for your company this Monday, Queen's birthday holiday. That is how we saw your news. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 5.30. Good night. This has been a Win News presentation. Win News, Regional Australia's number one news source.